Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at a GMP 1970 Dodge Coronet Super B in 118 scale. Uh, this is what you get in the packaging here. Um, you got the rear quarter windows that go in there are wrapped in a tissue paper um, to keep them protected. And then you also get the radio antenna um, that goes into its spot up there on the car. Let's go ahead and take a look at the car. Uh, let's take a look at the front end here. Um, I have installed the radio antenna. It just very nicely slots into the little spot there. Um, this one installed a whole heck of a lot easier than the one of my 1970 uh, GMP Roadrunner. That one was an absolute beast trying to get into a hole and it did not want to go. Um, so there were a few things that came uh, broken on this car when I got it. Um, those little chrome beauty rings that go around the hood pins um, those were off as well as the hood pins um, were also loose in the box um, so none of the none of that was on there um, uh, the hood pins actually slotted back down into holes in the core support which I will show you later when we do an under the hood look um, and the little beauty ring just kind of stuck back into their spot uh, because the hood pins actually fit into their spots really snugly um, I did not see the need to use glue um, on the hood pins and then those little beauty rings uh, are held in by the hood pins um, and they're not going to fall out unless I have the hood open. Um, you can see the very aggressive bumblebee style wings um, on the front bumpers here with the split bumper as well as we do have the little, little bee emblem there in the front of the grill as well as the 1970 plate on the front. And this car is very heavy. Uh, let's make your way around the side here. See the 440 emblem on the dual hood scoops there. Um, now these were functional hood scoops on the actual car. Uh, they would There would be a um, switch that you could operate inside the um, cabin of the car to allow the cool air into the engine area. Um, I know some people had problems um, this front valance piece down here um, is slightly different color, but nothing super noticeable. Um, only in the right light conditions can you see. Uh, I got the nice um, molded side marker, um, much nicer than a painted on. Got the nice uh, Mopar rally wheels here with the Goodyear poly last tires. This uh, car would look sweet with some pl matching plum crazy steel wheels. Would look beautiful with those. Uh, as we make our way down the side here, um, we do have some pretty big gaps on the front of the door, the rear of the door. Um, it's nice and snug back here. We see the nice giant C stripes on the tail end of the car. Uh, this car is just massive. You see the, the Super B emblem on the back there and the C stripe. Yeah, the tail marker there. See on the back end you get the tail lights that kind of look like bumblebee wings. Um, both side there as well as you get the Dodge, the bumblebee emblem. Um, dual exhaust, nicely done. Um, they blacked in the inside of the exhaust tip so it looks realistic, um, not just sticking a fully chrome tip on there that just looks goofy. Um, you see the Georgia Super 70 license plate that does flip down for the gas filler cap. Uh, while we are back here, let's take a look at the opening trunk. See it does have the trunk mat as well as the full-size spare back there with the jack. You got the jacking instructions on the underside of the trunk deck lid. Make your way down the passenger side of the vehicle. You got the C stripe again. Um, the beautifully aligned on this car. Um, I know some people were having problems with the C stripes being crooked or misaligned. Um, I feel that mine on this car were very beautifully done. 
Um, at first, I definitely uh, was not a fan of the rally wheels on this car, um, but it's actually grown on me as I've seen the car in person. They definitely fit the car and give it a sporty appearance. The little Chrysler Pentastar emblem down there. Just a little detail. Um, you can see on this side as well as the other side there is just a little bit of glue residue between this front valance piece and the um, front fender there. You can just see the like a little bit of glue residue between it. Um, just not too obnoxious, it's just a little annoying that for the price you pay for this car, having a little bit of glue residue out there. Um, we'll go ahead and take a look at the interior of the car now. That beautiful black interior with the grit, with the uh, wood paneling accenting, so on the dash as well as the center console and the steering wheel. Uh, looks like when the steering wheel is turned, the, uh, when the front wheels are turned, uh, sorry, I apologize, when the front wheels are turned, um, the steering wheel barely moves any, um, and is also off center and cannot be straightened to center. The gauges are beautifully done on this car. You can see everything clearly. Uh, it's got the pistol grip shifter back there as well. So seats tilt forward just a little bit. Um, he's not, not as tilty as some of the other vehicles. Oops. And we do have the window that does the window up well, well supposed to put the window up let's see will it actually do it looks like it just needs a little bit of help there we go it gets up there eventually um we'll see how the passenger side works driver side apparently does not work too well um so we'll just put it back down for now okay if it goes back down there we go. Okay, apparently it does not want to go back down. Um, it was just spinning. So we will see about that. Uh, if I can get it down, might be able to push it down, but I don't want to force anything at this moment. All black interior here is pretty hard to see. The nice front bucket seats on this. The seat belts. A look at this door panel here. This one goes up very nice and smooth and it stays up as it should. And then we go to put it down, it rolls back down. Just look at this beautiful engine bay on this car. I uh, got the 440 Magnum six pack there where you got the Ram Charger um, air scoops there. Um, you see here the hood pins, um, they slot into these little holes here as well as here. Um, they definitely fit snugly in there, um, don't just come out. Um, so I, I figured no need to glue since they're in there pretty good and it's not like I'm shaking the car around, it's just gonna sit in a display case on a shelf. Um, very intricately detailed in the wires um, for the spark plugs as well as you got the battery leads. Um, you got the different safety labels there on the radiator core support as well as the fender wall. Um, the hood has realistic springs on both sides. It does shut. Um, now then because I do have these little things that like to come out I do have to kind of push them down while they go through the hood. Pins. As you saw, the one over here was starting to wobble a little bit. Here is the car with the uh, rear quarter window in and the uh, driver's side window rolled all the way up. Um, it does take a little bit of pushing from the passenger side um, through and over to get the windows to pop into place. Um, so the quarter window gets caught on the door. Um, that is actually the reasoning for this door not closing all the way is it is catching on the quarter window there. So it's open just a hair. 
um, and I can't really get it closed without forcing it. Um, but I display the driver's side facing out in my display cases, so it'll be hidden. GMP serial plate, though this is car number 843 of 1,752 total produced. Uh, now then these are the real leaf springs on here that do flex um, to get the axle suspension and travel. At the dual exhausts that go all the way back, as well as the dry shaft that does spin when you turn the rear wheels. Um, it is a little clunky and not quite as smooth as my GMP Roadrunner, um, but is the feature that not a lot of cars have. I can see fuel lines running back, as well as other lines over here. We have the 1970 Dodge Coronet Super B. The front end. Let's see when I turn the wheels, what moves? We got the front valence piece there with the license plate and the front bumpers. The 1970 Dodge Coronet Super B, the Super B badging there um, on the side, uh, just more Super B badging in the um, name of the car. Uh, do see down here is the one of 1,752 produced. More Super B badging. Um, they do not, uh, like other Acme or GMP models, have like features listed on the side of the car or pictures of the car. Um, purely just got the plum crazy purple color with super B badging. After waiting months and months uh, for this Mopar muscle from GMP um, and finally receiving it and having a few of the parts broken um, such as the hood pins um, I was a little let down at first um, but overall after seeing that they were able to be easily placed back into their spot without needing to glue or any of that stuff um, I, the car has definitely grown on me especially considering the C stripes of um, perfect shape. The paint is in great shape. There's only like one or two small little nicks here or there, um, which honestly, the paint on this is better than some of my other Acme and GMP models. Um, I would definitely say the paint on this, um, better quality than the paint on my corporate blue Roadrunner um, that has a few spots and stuff that came from it versus this is practically flawless. Um, overall, the interior is great. Got the carpeted seats. Um, uh, sorry, not carpeted flooring. Uh, the seats uh, do fold forward. Got the bucket seats, the seat belts. Um, my complaint is the steering wheel does not turn with the turn of the front wheels. Um, but outside of that, that's, you know, to be fair, how often are you playing with the front wheels? It mainly just sits on display. Uh, the engine bay on this thing is incredible uh, with the Ram Charger air intake as well as, you know, you got the 446 pack um, carburetors there. And just the plumbed and wired and everything is just beautiful on this. The in, uh, underside of it is incredible. Um, definitely um, has warmed up to me and shown that it is a great quality by GMP. Um, now then, this is definitely the heaviest car that I have. It has beat out the corporate, corporate Blue Roadrunner as heaviest car that I have. GMP seems to make some beefy models. Um, Anyways, that has been my thoughts and review on the GMP 1970 Dodge Coronet Super B in 1 18th scale. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more of my content. Thanks!